Hello. Oh, I want to welcome all of you. Thank you for coming as we're here to remember Joshua Quintheller. You find out someone's middle name at times like this. And uh, you know, you'll have to excuse me because I'm going to be smiling when I think of Josh because he was such an amazing, wonderful guy. And, uh, but I want to thank you all for coming. I don't know if he ever imagined how many people he's touched in his life. So we're going to open it up in a word of prayer and just welcome God in his comfort. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this life, for Joshua Heller. And Lord, we ask that in our feeble attempts to honor him and bring a tribute to him, that you will be in the midst of us to bring comfort, to bring strength, to minister your hope. And Lord, we ask that you will touch each and every heart with your love today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I met Josh Heller when he was in high school in 1993. I was his youth pastor here at Living Streams. And um, when I met him, I realized that, you know, he's a very, very unique guy. He's very artistic. And uh, I realized he needed to be one of our leaders in our youth group. And so I brought him in, and he became one of our leaders. We had so many experiences together in our youth group, and I see some of you from our youth group here today, and it's awesome to see all of you. And what I noticed was that some of the things that happened is that um, on a Wednesday, we would be getting ready for a youth group, and uh, Josh would find out what my theme would be, and he would come up with a skit that day. And it would be amazing what he would come up with. One time, he took a Jars of Clay song, and he turned it into a mime, and it was fantastic. So Josh was very, very creative, and he was, he was wired with that mosaic, creative mind, but it was wonderful. It was something that I grew to love. I remember one of the experiences we had was we were on a trip. We took mission trips to Mexico, and um, I remember it was late at night. I, was, I had fallen asleep on the floor at the orphanage, and uh, in the middle of the night, I could feel something hitting my face. And, and I just, it was like, what is, what is this? And I woke up and I had a whole stack of books on my face. I think there was a few shoes. And it was, Josh was right next to me and he was reading his Bible, but he finally got tired of my snoring. And so he was pelting me with a lot of different things. <laughs> but Josh was, Josh was so wonderful. He was, we went on a hunting trip one time. We were, we were bird hunting and Steve Onaveris, we were just talking about, he remembers this. And, and he loved guns, by the way, you guys. I don't know if you knew that. But um, 
But someone said, where's Josh? And uh, another person said, well, he's over there shooting a Russian assault rifle. <laughs> so Josh, Josh is the type of man who was not afraid to be who he was, to be the unique man that he was meant to be. He, he, was, he used to do percussion here at Living Streams, and when you watched him playing the drums or the percussion, that smile of his was so infectious. It was something that just brightened up your day. He had such an awesome personality, and my wife said there's no one that can harmonize like Josh Heller. I would say that I learned a lot from him about being a man. He was a man of courage, and I called him a warrior. He wasn't afraid, like I said, to be the man that he was, to be unique. And when he faced cancer, I remember he made up his mind that he was going to live, and he was going to live life to the full as much as he could. I remember there were things that he did where, like he went out four-wheeling, and I saw a picture on Facebook of his truck after he went four-wheeling where he crunched it. But nothing was going to hold him back from just trying to just keep on living, keep on going for it all the way to the end. And I remember um, just the way that he kept his dreams alive. He had a dream of doing a, a gun business, gunsmithing business with, with Corbin, and, and he was making plans for that. He was going after his dreams. And you know, he never, never, never gave up on life, no matter what. He held on for a miracle. He was really believing for a miracle. And as I look at Hebrews 11, I see of those that were heroes of faith who did not experience their miracle, but they were honored for their faith, that they embraced the promise even though they never saw it. And I see Josh that way. Josh, in the midst of pain, I don't know if I've ever seen someone in more pain than Josh Heller. And uh, only a few weeks ago, he, came, uh, he, he called and asked for me to come serve him communion. And this was at the hospice house. I think that you see a lot about a man when they're brought to the brink inside their life. Josh was in that room, and, and he asked for me to serve him communion. And he had his white dog, Sammy, with him. He came halfway through what his dad brought him. But when we were there, I noticed that uh, we, we were focusing on the sufferings of Jesus. And we were learning what it means to have fellowship with Jesus and his sufferings. And I saw the, the Savior that Jesus was to, to Josh, that he embraced him with everything in him at his, at his hardest moments, at his most painful moments. He really was a warrior. He fought the fight. He ran the race, and he kept the faith. And there really is a crown of glory that he's receiving right now. Now, I could tell you a lot more stories, but I'm going to share something that Mark Buckley uh, asked me to share, who's senior pastor here and his pastor as well. And I'm just going to read what he said, which it really has a lot of the same kind of things as what I experienced. He said this, I've been thinking a lot about Josh Heller since his death last week. Josh came to Living Streams as a boy when his dad, Alan, joined our staff in 1992. During college, he commuted back to Phoenix each weekend from the University of Arizona so he could sing with our worship team on Sundays. Several months ago, I went to visit Josh in the hospital the day he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I read to him from Isaiah 41, eight through 13, which was the passage I had been reading in my one year Bible study that day. I thought it was an obscure passage, but I felt it would give him hope. But you, O Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, your descendants, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant, I have chosen you, and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be nothing at all, for I am the Lord your God, 